What's going on, everybody? Trevor Noah here. Welcome to another episode of the Daily Social Distancing Show. We are now on day 23 of staying at home to try and prevent the spread of coronavirus. And here's your quarantine tip of the day. Sticking to a daily schedule will help to keep you motivated. Yeah, that's why every day I get up at three in the afternoon, shower, and then immediately take a nap. It keeps me going. Anyway, on tonight's episode, coronavirus is coming for Black America. Dulce Sloan roasts the homes of media people and a big announcement from Bernie Sanders. So let's get straight into it. Welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. From Trevor's couch in New York City to your couch somewhere in the world, this is the Daily Social Distancing Show with Trevor Noah. Before we catch you up on the coronavirus news, we have to talk about the major story rocking the presidential race. Bernie Sanders has officially announced that he is ending his campaign. Yeah. And I gotta say, man, this is a big one. And even though Bernie lost two presidential races, you can't argue that he has had an impact on America. In fact, I would argue he's had more of an impact on America than some presidents have. Like, he's pushed Medicare for all into the mainstream. He shined a light on income inequality and how corporations have used money to rig the system in their favor. And he showed us all that it's okay to use our outdoor voice indoors. Yeah, that's not a thing. You can use your voice wherever you want. Like now! Now, Bernie aside, coronavirus is still the thing dominating the news right now. And of course it is. We're all stuck inside. But before we get into the latest headlines, let's, let's catch up on some fun news in our ongoing segment, A Ray of Sunshine. All right, in our first bit of good news, Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter and world's richest barista, has announced that he will be donating $1 billion to help fight the coronavirus. That's 28% of his wealth. Yeah, and that's amazing. Using your money to fight coronavirus, and what better person to fight a thing that's poisoning society than the inventor of a thing that's poisoning society? Now, I'm just being a hater, man. This is incredible. Like, for real. It's incredible because it's generous. It's a powerful gesture at a moment like this. And it's also throwing shade, so much shade, at Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos. Because they also donated money, but they donated way, way less than Dorsey. And they've got way, way more money than Dorsey. Right? He donated, like, 30% of his net worth, and they donated less than half a percent of their net worth. It's like if the check at a restaurant came and everyone else tips five bucks and then you buy the waiter a Lamborghini. That's basically what Dorsey did right here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, the service was great. Oh, my friends, yeah, they're just cheap bitches. You know how it is. Now look, not everyone has a billion dollars, which is why people around the world have found all sorts of ways to try and stop the spread of this disease. For instance, you know how we're all stressed about making sure that we keep six feet between ourselves and other people when we're out in public? Well, some amateur inventors have come up with their own novel solutions. This man's wacky social distancing device is going viral. He designed this contraption out of tent poles and duct tape in order to know exactly how far away six feet is. Okay, that is a super smart idea. But I will say it could have been a lot easier. I mean, it's cool to have the disc and everything, but all you have to do to keep people from coming near you is just carry a clipboard. Yeah, and then you just ask people if they have a few minutes to save the environment, and everyone will stay at least six feet away. And keeping people six feet away from you is a great idea until you need to get close to some people because they're delivering your food. So how do you solve that problem? Well, two heroes in Missouri, they totally figured it out. A woman in Missouri is taking no contact delivery to the next level. This is video from TikTok user Tracy. She and her roommate set up a pulley system to get their pizza without ever having to open their door. They did it all using a box and some heavy duty yarn. They just put the cash in the box and they lowered it. Tell me that is not genius. Like what else were they gonna do? The only other solution would have been to just have the delivery person leave the food at the door and then wait 15 seconds for them to leave. But there's no fun in that. And what an emotional roller coaster this must have been for that pizza. Hmm? You don't think about that. One minute the pizza was in there all happy, like, it's happening. I'm going to heaven. I can feel it. I'm floating. I'm, no, why is she eating me? Ah, this is the bad place. Now I know what you're thinking. Trevor, 
How am I gonna work off all of this pizza that I keep ordering at home if I can't get to the gym? Well, here's a question. Why make it to the gym when you can have the gym make it to you? One man not letting his gym closing down keep him from getting in a good workout, so he turned to nature. Yeah, Zachary Skidmore got a chainsaw out and went to work, built himself what he's calling the Lumberjack Gym out of logs from his farm. The Lumberjack Gym includes a bench press, squat rack, leg press, dumbbells, yes, even a treadmill, and it's all made out of wood. That is impressive because if I built a gym out of a forest I wouldn't have energy to work out because I just built a gym out of a forest and this guy's attention to detail is truly impressive did you see all the pieces he's got the bench he's got the, he's got the leg press he's got the squat machine he's got everything you would find in the gym yeah he even made the old man in the locker room who refuses to cover up his balls yeah, that was really intricate. Like the detail around the testicles. That's a lot of wood chipping right there, my friends. Also, this is a great idea until the animals discover this forest gym. Because our one saving grace as humans is that animals don't really work out. Can you imagine when the bears discover this and get jacked? It's over for us. All right, that's it for the good news. Let's get into the big story of the day. Let's talk about black people. They're like white people, but with seasoning. In America, black people have had a long history of getting the short end of the stick. From slavery, to Jim Crow, to the criminal justice system, to the sunken place. But when it came to the coronavirus, it seemed like for once, black people were catching a break. A lot of these viruses were immune to. Yeah. Because our skin is radiant and our skin comes from the sun. Mm -hmm. That is our superpower, melanin. Black people, we will not get the coronavirus because we got a little thing in our body where we call the melanin. Minorities can't catch it. We sure. They Say said that one more time. Minorities can't catch it. Minorities can't catch coronavirus. coronavirus. Nah. Why do you that? say? Why do you believe Name that? Name one. I don't know, but it could <laughs> happen. <laughs> Name one, though. It could happen. Name one of us. Yeah, when this whole pandemic was just kicking off, many people, many people thought coronavirus was something that just didn't involve black people. Sort of like Tennis Elbow or Tiger King. Very quickly, we've come to learn that not only can black people get coronavirus, it turns out that black people are being hit harder than anyone else in America right now. With the rate of infection increasing in cities across America, there are alarming new statistics showing the pandemic is taking an especially heavy toll on minority communities. African Americans account for 41% of COVID deaths in Michigan, though only 14% of residents. In Chicago, black residents represent 72% of deaths, but just 30% of the population. Louisiana's population is 32% black, which accounts for about 70% of coronavirus deaths. The disparity uh, in deaths among African-Americans, they're startling. The data is clear. Coronavirus is disproportionately impacting and killing people of color. That's right. As America has become the epicenter of the coronavirus worldwide, black America has become the epicenter of the virus's worst effects. And this has become such a major problem that even President Trump has taken notice. In the US, African Americans are dying at a much higher rate from COVID-19 than other groups. President Trump calls it a real problem and a tremendous challenge. This is something that's come up, and I don't mean by a little bit, I mean many times. It's a real thing. Now, why is it that the African American community is so much, you know, numerous times more than everybody else? Why is it three or four times uh, more so for the black community as opposed to other people, it doesn't make sense. And I don't like it. And we're going to have statistics over the next probably two to three days. It almost sounds like Trump is jealous that black people get coronavirus more than anyone else. Just because of the way he said it. How come black people are getting it and not me? What do they have that I don't have? Is it swag? Is that what it is? Is it caused by swag? No, but look, obviously I'm joking. I'm totally joking, man. If anything, it's refreshing. It's honestly refreshing to see President Trump so concerned about the black community. But, but when he says it doesn't make sense that coronavirus is hitting black Americans the hardest, it's actually the opposite, right? Because when you look at the systemic and socioeconomic factors facing black people in America, 
it makes complete sense. You see, overall, black people are less likely to have health insurance. Black people are more likely to have pre-existing conditions like asthma and diabetes, and those things make coronavirus more lethal. Black people are also more likely to be in service jobs where you can't work from home and you have to come into contact with lots of people every day. And of course, there's always just straight up racism that affects black people as well. For example, one study has found that black people have been less likely to be offered a coronavirus test by their doctor, even if they're exhibiting the same symptoms as white patients. Yeah. So while almost every industry around the world is shut down, it looks like racism is still considered an essential service. And racism is even affecting whether or not black people can protect themselves and cover their faces when they go outside. Jody Armour is a law professor at USC Law School. He and other academics believe wearing masks can pose a problem for people of color. The fear of being mistaken for a dangerous criminal may be greater than the fear of contracting COVID-19. Wearing protective masks while black is a concern just like driving while black is. This officer right here behind us, he just followed us from outside, told us that we cannot wear masks. There's a presidential order, there's a state order, and he's just, and he's following us right now to store. We're being asked to leave for being safe. Come on, man, this is some bullshit. If black people don't wear a mask in public, what's gonna happen? People are gonna say they're endangering public health. But then if black people do wear masks, then they're treated like they're preparing for a mission in Red Dead Redemption or something. Like, what do you expect black people to do, hmm? At this point, the only safe way for black people to cover their faces in public is to try and disguise themselves as a white person. And I'm not talking about code switching. I'm talking about actually putting on a white person's face as your mask. Some people will be suspicious, but it'll work. Hey, you look white, but there's something off. Say something only a white person would say. Uh, I wish Kamala Harris was back in this race. Checks out. I'll see you at hockey practice, buddy. So look, the unfortunate truth is that the black community is being slammed by coronavirus right now. But in a way, it's not because there's anything special about coronavirus. It's because any widespread crisis in America is bound to hit the most vulnerable and disadvantaged groups the hardest. And yes, I know this is depressing, especially right now. I mean, you don't want to deal with coronavirus and racism at the same time. It's like two Marvel villains coming into one movie. We don't have enough heroes. What we do have is real life black people showing how resilient they are. And one of the videos that gave me the most joy is this viral video of a group of black people throwing a social distancing block party that I won't lie, brought me a little bit of joy. Ah, yes. I remember when the only thing in the air we had to worry about was 24 carats of magic. Those were the good old days. All right, I don't know about you guys, but being stuck in quarantine, I've been watching a shit ton of news, like all day. That's the only thing I watch, just to try and find out what's going on in the world. And it turns out Dulce Sloan is also watching the news all the time. But it turns out she's been focused on something totally different. Check it out. Hey, friends. I don't know about you, but I just finished watching all of RuPaul's Drag Race. Twice. So I started watching the news. There is more grim news at the epicenter of the pandemic. Total coronavirus cases have ball. eclipsed 300,000 And that got real depressing real fast. And then I started watching on mute. Tens of millions more Americans. And it's amazing. See, all the anchors are broadcasting from their homes now. So if you don't listen to what they're saying and just look at the background, oh, it's like the worst version of Cribs. Check it out. All right. Now I love me some Anderson Cooper, but this is a little much. It's like, we get it. You breathe. I mean, he looks like he lives in a real life game of Clue. He doesn't need to be worried about Corona. He needs to be worried about Colonel Mustard in the kitchen with the candlestick. Okay, how's this guy the same color as his wall? If he wasn't wearing a black jacket, I wouldn't know where he stopped and the apartment started. 
And is it just me or is this apartment giving out real American psycho vibe? Like quick, get the blood stained tarp off the couch. We're going on air. The self isolation got to this lady and she snapped. Look at that, color coded books, why? For what? She looked like she live streaming from inside Pinterest. I mean, how does that even work? Hmm, what should I read tonight? How about something blue? I'd love to see her in a bookstore. Um, excuse me, do you have anything in a seafoam green? Girl, what? Is that how a CNBC reporter lives? This dude's fireplace is bigger than every studio apartment in Brooklyn. He should check to make sure there's not an MFA student squatting in there. He's obviously got money though, I'll give him that. I can learn how to do the thing where you make money by watching a line on a chart go up. Hold on. Please give me $500,000. Expert. Wow, nice poster. Slow down, cool dad. Don't smoke all the weed. Why is he even there? I thought the colleges closed their dorms. Boring. Oh, f this dude is pretty wide. Move on, move on. I can't tell if this woman's going to update us on the news or sell us handmade turquoise jewelry. Woman, you're not in the Southwest. You're in Florida. I want to see the Golden Girls set. Give me cheesecake, an eye, shoulder pads, shoulder plants, Blanche. Yo, that man's bookshelf looks like a limp penis. And if there's anything I've seen, it's limp penis. What's up with these candlesticks? It's like if Harry Potter's wand got genital warts. Mm-mm, I don't like that. Is this a home office or timeout? Wait, does this guy have a framed picture of himself? Or maybe he's the picture that comes with the frame. Cause his whole vibe is kind of the picture that comes with the frame. But also, is he single? Cause uh, I don't know if I've been under quarantine for too long, but um, the man's looking like a snack, real two-piece and a biscuit, a real lunchable, a real hot dog when you got home from school. Mm. All right, that's all for today, friends. Join me next time when I roast Trevor Noah's apartment. Like, what is that trophy? Did he win the World Cup, but for babies? <sighs> See you then, bye! Wow, uh, okay, I feel like that last one was unnecessary, Dulce, but anyway, when we come back, I'll be talking to Roxanne Gay about the racial disparity with coronavirus and what everyday people can do to help. So stick around. Welcome back to The Daily Social Distancing Show. Earlier today, I spoke with best-selling author Roxane Gay about the racial disparities surrounding the coronavirus. Check it out. Roxane Gay, welcome to The Daily Social Distancing Show. <laughs> hey, Trevor, how are you? I'm doing okay. I mean, uh, sometimes I, I feel like the world is ending and I stress about everybody. And then at other times I feel like we're going to get out of it. I know I'm extremely lucky that I can still work. How are you doing? Uh, you know, it's the same. I'm extremely lucky that I can still do at least part of my job. People still like, want to read, especially now that they have some time. But I'm also worried about the state of the world and the more vulnerable people in it because... If I find it difficult, what are people who are living paycheck to paycheck and on the margins of society, like, how are they feeling? So I think about that a lot. You, you've had a really interesting um, role in shaping a conversation in and around coronavirus and what we can do as people to help each other. And that conversation has been around how we help. You know, um, there are many organizations that are trying to help. There are many uh, philanthropies that are trying to help, et cetera. But, You've come out with what many people think is a radical idea, and you've just said, give people money if you can. Just give human beings money. Why do you say this, and how did you get to this idea? Well, you know, the reality is that if we're going to sit around waiting for the government or nonprofits to get it together enough to actually help people, people are going to go hungry in the meantime. Their electricity is going to be cut off in the meantime. A lot of what people need right now is just cash and no questions asked. And so I was thinking about, you know, how drastically I had lost my income. And I just thought, well, I can probably weather this for a few months, but what about people who can't? And so I just decided, well, let me give some people some money because I know that right now people are trying to stock up on groceries and water and <laughs> toilet paper. And so I wanted to be able to help a few people to do that. And, you know, especially when you have to wait like four or five weeks or more for a $1,200 one-time check from the government, mm -hmm. you know, it's not enough. And, it's, you know, in a better world, the government would handle this. But we don't live in a better world. We live in this world. And so those of us with means, I think, have to do our part to whatever extent we can. 
I, I won't lie, when I first saw your tweets and what you were doing, I, the, 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 the pessimist in me immediately jumped out and I, because I panicked. I was just like, you know, I saw you tweeting saying, if you need money, let me know and I will send you money. And immediately I was like, Roxanne, people are gonna scam you. How do you trust everybody? How do you know that people need the money? How do you, like, how have you dealt with the conflict of information in your mind? You know, I did worry about that. And most people seem to be really worried about me getting scammed. You know, I don't have time to play detective and CSI everyone. And so if you are really running a scam for $100, then your karma is, you know, whatever happens to your karma is what happens to your karma. You know, I may have been scammed, but I can live with that knowing that more people who are genuine and who actually need the help are being helped than people are scamming. You um, have received praise from so many different people for inspiring this. Um, I would argue one of the biggest names who came out in support of what you're doing um, is President Barack Obama, who tweeted about you and said, what Roxanne is doing is amazing. As communities, we need to come together and help. Um, you, you, I've heard you say that you, you had sort of conflicting feelings about this because on the one hand, you were happy that Barack was, I mean, it's Barack Obama who's saying, you know, congratulations and, and, and he's inspired by your cause. But at the same time, you felt like he could be doing more. What did you mean by that? You know, I think that he has spent a lot of his post-presidency, as is his right, being decidedly apolitical. And I, right now, we need leaders to step forward and say that what Donald Trump and his administration are doing is unacceptable. They are absolutely letting American people die. It's avoidable. And, you know, a former president has some clout. He should say something. But at the same time, I'm like super honored and flattered that he mentioned me and was aware of what I was doing. But I think the tension is fine. Like I'm totally fine holding him accountable for his power and what he can do with it, while also being appreciative of the recognition. You've always been somebody who has engaged in and written about um, communities and people who are the most marginalized in society. You know, as the coronavirus is growing, as the outbreak is spreading, and as, as um, its effects are being felt by communities, black people and the amount of suffering they're experiencing, black Americans specifically, is unfortunately becoming a story again, where it's like, oh, once again, black people are bearing the brunt of something that is happening in America. Uh, firstly, what do you think this says about America? And secondly, what do you think can be done, if anything? Well, it shows that what those of us who have been talking about inequality all along are talking about is that the inequities are systemic. And when something like a pandemic happens, those inequities become even more pronounced. And we're seeing that now with the truly horrifying mortality rates for coronavirus in the Black community. And so what we need to do is create actual systemic change to suggest that perhaps universal basic income and Medicare for all are no longer far-fetched left-wing fantasies, but realities everyone is going to benefit from, but especially black people. Before I let you go, you are helping people directly. You have organizations that you feel are doing an amazing job. If somebody's watching this saying, Roxanne, I also want to help. I want to do something. Uh, where do they even begin? What, what advice would you give them? You know, I think it's look at what's going on in your community and decide which organizations are the best for you and where you want to spend your dollars. Uh, I think food banks are a really good place to send your money right now and uh, Planned Parenthood and RAIN because domestic violence rates are increasing at really alarming rates now that everyone's at home and people are feeling economic pressure. Uh, so I just think it's what are your interests and um, how can you best direct whatever expendable money you have to those organizations? All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Look after yourself. Um, stay healthy mentally, especially because you're on Twitter so much out there. And uh, hopefully I'll be, seeing you, I'll be seeing you soon on the other side. Yeah, you will. It's great to see you again. Nice seeing you, Roxanne. Bye. Thank you so much for your time, Roxanne. I appreciate you. Well, that's our show for today. Before we go, as always, I would like to remind you that as America reaches peak corona infections, the doctors, nurses, and first responders in this country need our help. So please, go to Thrive Global's First Responders First and donate whatever you can to help them get the masks, gloves, and gowns that they need to save lives. And if you want to help in New York City specifically, please go to 
the New York Mayor's Fund COVID-19 response and donate there. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Remember, you can freeze your toilet paper to make it last longer. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Now, here it is, your moment of Zen. Congressman Delaney called Medicare for all political suicide. What do you say to Congressman Delaney? You won't. They're not going to go along. You, you throw your hands up, but you, right. ha you haven't. In but you got Donald Trump up here and ask him how much he pays in taxes. Jake, your question is a Republican talking point. Jake, I'm, in all due respect, did you go back to my third grade essay when I was in PS 197? I, I do know what I wrote the damn bill. Senator Sanders, let me bring you into this conversation Thank you. I wrote and the ask damn you bill. the question.